but it's my great pleasure to introduce him. So Davide Tunini, um, yeah, a colleague and a friend, uh, that is going to tell us a little bit about something we haven't sp been speaking much today, and it's about uh, fertilizer. So Davide, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Lori. Thank you for inviting me. So my name is Davide Tonini, and I'm a, <coughs> a scientific officer at the Joint Research Center in Sevilla. Um, I would like to share with you some insights from uh, research that we we've, we've been carrying on for the last three years with some colleagues, and. Uh, Yes, and the focus is on uh, phosphorus uh, fertilizers derived from secondary raw materials, meaning waste. Um, <coughs> just uh, an historic uh, quick digression here. Uh, phosphorus was uh, first uh, isolated from uh, uh, human urine in uh, 1669 by an imbrant, um, and only a few hundred years later was then uh, used uh, for uh, growing plants as fertilizer. Yes, you hear me now? Yeah. So after that, we started using it for, for growing crops. And the current uh, utilization in Europe, for instance, is around 1,000 ton, kilotons of phosphorus per year. This number doesn't say much on its own, but if you look at the, at the quantity of imported phosphorus, then you understand that uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, security of supply for European Union, this is a key resource because uh, maybe 95 to 98% of the resource is imported from other countries, mainly Morocco, China, and USA, okay? So this is um, something <laughs> we are focusing on in terms of diminish the, the import and uh, ensuring security of supply for the future. Import of uh, fertilizers that uh, in practice means uh, excavating the materials. This is mineral fertilizers, okay? Another uh, factor to take into consideration is that uh, in many parts of Europe, and you see them in blue, um, phosphorus is, uh, is found in excess in soils, meaning mm, you basically have an oversaturation uh, of the soil with phosphorus, and in those areas, there are uh, big problems mm, in terms of <laughs> reapplying uh, digested or compost uh, that instead should be shipped outside the area or uh, processed at a very high price in order to reduce the eutrophication effects. This is, for instance, northern Italy. This is north of Spain. Um, north of France, the Netherlands, parts of Denmark, and UK. These are the areas that we call high people and animal dense regions. In these areas, the, the value of digested or compost derived from waste uh, that you would like to recirculate on land is between minus five and plus two euro per ton. Um, most often you have to pay the farmers to dispose the material um, due to the, <laughs> and, and the reason for that is the low agronomic and um, the low agronomic efficiency of the material that is not attractive for, for the sector. Uh, in, in the Netherlands, manure is shipped to Poland and Germany at very high cost. Sewage sludge in these regions is co-incinerated, so there is no recovery of resources at all from sewage sludge, and the ash are disposed of. So you can understand that uh, um, there is a need for uh, establishing advanced systems 
in order to recover the nutrients from the residual resources that could be sewage sludge, manure, or food waste. The work was done in the context of uh, revising the fertilizer directive for uh, the European Union. This was then uh, released in 2018, June, this year. The work uh, was to lay down technical criteria for market access of this fertilizer material derived from waste and residual resources as part of the circular economy package. The role of the GRC, included me, was uh, developing the criteria, market analysis, and uh, life cycle assessment that also included the life cycle costing. We focused on, uh, well, we focused on secondary raw material and we first of all looked at the studies that were available. The problem with most of the studies available is that they give contrasting results. Contra contrasting results because of the allocation procedures that are often employed um, in these studies and that broke mass and substance balances. Um, the fact that the waste management function is often forgotten, the fact that primary data are not uh, are obsolete or uh, not state of the art, and externalities when you calculate the costs are not included. These are the main uh, flaws, let's say, or criticalities that we found in, uh, in the literature and uh, the, mm, the main leverages, let's say, for uh, drivers for our study. Um, this is the conceptual approach we use in the, when assessing any circular economy uh, pathway. And I think this is the, the key point of the study. When you have, uh, for instance, a system uh, w where you want to close the phosphorus loop, you have ex extraction of, uh, of, phos of phosphorus fertilizer that goes into agriculture and is applied on land. From this, you have the, the, the crops that grow and at least for today, a big portion of this resource is lost into waste. Only a little portion, that is the red one here, is returned to land. What you would like to do with the circular economy is maximizing this return flow in terms of uh, efficient return of phosphorus, for instance, or nitrogen and so forth to the land. This is what uh, the technologies we are assessing attempt to do. And how do you compare the, the systems? Well, if you have an advanced, let's say, phosphorus recovery system, which we're focusing on, you, you cannot compare this system with the linear economy, the linear extraction of phosphorus. You have to basically subtract to the, to the production of phosphorus, of the advanced phosphorus, what we call the counterfactual scenario, the mm, business as usual management of the feedstock. Only this equation mathematically will give you a correct answer in comparing the two systems. So the reference, which we call R here, that represents the linear economy, must be compared to the recovery of phosphorus, AP, minus, minus the current management practice of that substrate. This is mathematically what gives you the correct answer. And this is, this is often overestimated in, uh, in different studies. Basically, this factor here is forgotten or not included or allocated in different ways. So we call NB here the net balance, which includes the shifted feedstock management from the uh, basically the, the fact that you shift the, the management of your, of, of your feedstock from a current business as usual management to an advanced recovery system. The way we do the LCA is not uh, feedstock specific, but we look at the final product, which is the phosphorus fertilizers recovered from the material. I will be more clear on this later on. So the case study, here we have different raw materials that uh, uh, appear uh, in Europe and that contain phosphorus and nutrients, sewage sludge, 
from which you can recover struvite through precipitation, um, poultry manure from which you can recover um, a, a phosphorus rich ash, sewage sludge that you can incinerate and then you can acidulate and produce a SSP like material where SSP is uh, the abbreviation for single superphosphate, meat and bone meal that you can uh, also incinerate, acidulate in order to produce then a mineral fertilizer like material. Pig manure you can uh, also treat into biochar through pyrolysis. And the reference system for us, let's say the linear, uh, representing the linear economy system would be the extraction of uh, uh, single superphosphate from rocks. Okay? So we have these six pathways. Five of them are uh, representing a circular system and one of them is a linear economy based system. Um, it's an LCA, so mm, well, maybe I have to clarify some details here. We have a functional unit, which is a kilogram of phosphorus bioavailable, bioavailable to plants applied on land in a concentrated pea fertilizer product. Concentrated means more than 4% content of pea. So cannot, this doesn't include digestate or compost material. Only concentrated fertilizer that can be bagged and sold in a market traded and so forth. Feedstock here is uh, what I mentioned before. We focused on uh, population and, li and livestock dense regions in Europe. We look at technology that are already running. So all these plants were uh, data were taken from producers that are uh, spread around Europe, except for the biochar, which is a pilot plant at TRL 8 in the Netherlands with a limited capacity. And the target audience here was the European Commission. The, plan, the, the project was paid directly by the, the Directorate General Grow um, and private industry that were also part of our working group. So let's uh, move a little bit to the results here. So if you take global warming, in this chart you have global warming. The unit is kilogram of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of uh, phosphorus bioavailable applied on land. And here you have the different pathways that we are looking at. Struvite, <laughs> manure, uh, ash, um, fertilizer from sewage sludge, fertilizer from meat and bone meal, biochar, and our reference. So I take the reference now, which is the, the mineral fertilizer, I draw a line, anything above this line will have a higher impact Anything below that line will be better than the linear system. So as you can see, most of our scenarios here, except for the, ma for the, for the ash from poultry manure, gave us a better performance than, uh, than the reference system, which is the linear economy, okay? the extraction and use of a mineral fertilizer. This is good, of course. You can replicate the analysis uh, I don't want to go into the details, but uh, we didn't analyze only global warming, but uh, different uh, impact categories, including the toxic ones or the eutrophication and so forth. The overall message here, well, just to go a little bit deeper here, anything that is in the green quadrant uh, is better than uh, the reference system. Anything that goes in the red, in the red quadrant will be a bad guy. If you, if you have a quick look to the, to, the, to the figures, you see that most of the data points here are ending up in the, in the green quadrants. So most of the, for most of the pathways as, as assessed in this, in this analysis, the performance, at least environmentally, was better than the reference system, okay? However, when you look at the cost, and this was calculated in the similar manner through life cycle costing, same, same, uh, same uh, approach, so everything that is above the line here will be worse economically than the, the linear system, and anything that ends up below will be better. The unit is euro per kilogram of uh, bioavailable, bioavailable P, phosphorus, applied on land. So all the costs for most, for most of, the, of the pathways 
the costs are higher than the reference system, which is the mineral fertilizer here. Budget costs that are the sum of market cost plus taxes. And uh, for a mineral fertilizer, the cost at today is around 1.4 euro per kilogram of P, P which is around uh, 400 euro per kilogram of material. When you, when, you, when you buy the material, the material has a content of phosphorus around 30%. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can say there are higher costs of implementation for these technologies, for these advanced phosphorus recovery technologies. Um, but when you then move from budget cost that only include market cost and taxes to what we call, yeah, there is, <laughs> forgot to say there are some uh, um, assumptions here. In the Netherlands, for instance, the manure must be shipped off the country, okay? 25% to 30% of the manure is annually shipped out. So this implies our very, very high cost. Of course, if you take uh, as baseline the Netherlands, anything you do with the manure there will be economically cheaper than what they are doing today. But that's an extreme case, and it's represented by these data points here that make these scenarios based on manure better than already, already even without uh, only uh, looking at market cost, better than uh, importing um, phosphorus fertilizers from, uh, from Morocco or from uh, from outside Europe. But that's specifically to the Netherlands. Uh, let's say the other, the, other uh, the, the, the baseline in blue represents the, the average European situation in, uh, in, re in a region with high density of, of animals and people. Then if you move from budget cost to societal cost, so when you include the externalities, so on top of market cost, calculated as shadow prices, we, we top that with uh, external cost, so an, uh, the cost of the emissions calculated as shadow prices, and then you end up finally with a total societal cost. So we are internalizing the environmental impacts, basically, okay, with a consistent methodology. Um, then, okay, then basically all the scenarios that we are uh, assessing here have a better performance than the, uh, than the mineral fertilizer, which is our linear economy uh, today. Um, you can see the, the, the externalities are, are in red. So some scenarios, if you notice, some scenarios give even negative externalities uh, because you, you may have energy recovery in that pathway you may have additional co-functions provided that give you, in the end, um, some negative, uh, negative prices, savings, let's say, additionally to that are not internalized today, in a way. Could be savings of uh, substances and so forth, uh, nutrient leaching, uh, metals, uh, uh, reduction of metals deposition on land, and so forth. All these are externalities that may even be negative. For instance, in the case of the biochar here. Um, so overall, most of the scenarios are, uh, are given, from a societal perspective, lower cost. Um, what is the, and well, if you then take into account the, the if, you, if, you, if you make the assessment for the Netherlands, where the situation is extreme, uh, then, the, uh, then the benefits are even higher. Okay. So, what was the main uh, one of the, uh, if I have to summarize, one of the main learning of this study was uh, the fact that uh, it has pointed out that when you make an assessment starting from uh, residues, you have to remember that these residues are today already treated, already in use. Most of the assessments depart from. Uh, Most of the assessments, LCAs, they look at this scenario and they compare it with this one. But that's wrong. 
they completely miss, sorry, they, they depart from these feedstocks, they calculate a scenario, and they forget that the, c the, 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 the feedstock is today in use. It has a waste management function that should be taken into account. That's a subtraction, mathematically, that changes the results. Okay? So this is often forgotten, and it's, and it's what we call um, the counterfactual mm, scenario, or, or, com or competing use of the biomass. And it's something that we are even discussing within the Renewable Energy Directive and the next, uh, the next phase. We didn't manage to squeeze it in, but it's something that they are discussing even at that level. So the reference scenario for the use of the feedstock should be taken into account. It's actually a subtraction mathematically, okay? So <laughs> from the study, we, we could see that uh, for most, uh, wh when, you, when you look at the uh, circular, in this case, it's a circular bioeconomy concept. Most of the scenarios have uh, lower environmental impacts than the, the linear scenario, higher implementation cost when you look only at budget cost, but when you look at societal cost, then there is overall a lower cost, okay? Therefore, these pathways are actually promising, even from a cost perspective, and that's what that was a message that never came up in any previous study. And one of the reasons for that was that uh, this part here, so the fact that the, 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 the feedstock is already treated today was completely forgotten or neglected in the assessment. Yeah, so if you, if you want more information, there is a, a report published here supporting the directive uh, that was uh, released in June 2009, and a few articles uh, published. Okay, and if you have further questions now, I'm happy to, to help. Thanks, David. This is a very timely, very timing uh, study. I think many people was waiting for the phosphorus uh, LCA. Um, I have a stupid question, um, maybe very naive uh, to think. I know that Netherlands has a lot of problem on phosphorus surplus. Do you still see the trend of uh, increasing import, increasing demand um, in the Netherlands for phosphorus import, given that they have actually this much already in the manure? Yeah, maybe to just to answer, I think uh, one third of the technical working group was from the Netherlands here, but because they, 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 they were mobilized because they have a, a, a huge economic problem with the shipping of the manure. 30%, as you say, 30% of the manure annually shipped to Poland or, uh, or, uh, or Germany because it cannot be spread locally. And, uh, and therefore they are pushing a lot for this technology. So they will be among the first to develop the they have already different plants making struvite and uh, biochar, they are uh, close to, to full scale. And uh, I think also most of the other technology, at least for each of these pathways, there is already a plant working in the Netherlands and they are expanding the capacity in the next years. So th they are front runners on that. Th they are working on that already. All the, most of the data came from those plants. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <b> <laughs> no. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the idea of this study was exactly to compare uh, some promising uh, avenues 
to, to, to generate, uh, to produce phosphorus. And you can see them here. So, for instance, this is a very aggregated chart illustrating to you the, the different uh, societal costs. Um, for most of the technologies, uh, we are lower than the, the mineral fertilizer, which is this one. Only one technology was very much worse. Uh, so the, yeah, the ranking here, uh, you, you can say struvite is, uh, is, a, is a better option, but uh, m most of them, here I didn't report the uncertainties that were mm, consistently considered in the study, but uh, most of them uh, have similar, I would say, comparable, uh, comparable uh, performances. So the, the point here was to recover efficiently the phosphorus. Uh, the, processing the processing was less important uh, on the results. Um, most important was to get the also the assessment understanding, the conceptualization of the assessment uh, uh, correct. As I mentioned earlier, many studies in the past are forgetting that there is already <laughs> a treatment in place for these feedstocks. And when you do an advanced recovery, you do both waste management function and recovery. And most of the past studies are completely forgetting the baseline. So mathematically, they are getting it wrong. That's, uh, that, that was a bit uh, one of the points that we made in the, in the paper was. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you for, for this um, interesting demonstration of the benefits from uh, cycling phosphorus. Uh, but what do you think um, about the issue of uh, the overload of phosphorus in uh, some sp region of Europe that you showed uh, on the map? Uh, because as long as the u we have, uh, um, we are raising uh, cattle with uh, lots, lots of imported feed, from uh, abroad, like, like take the example of French Brittany with the big, um, uh, the big lots which are fed with the with the uh, soybean soybean uh, feed from South America. There will be an overload on the region of 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 the minerals, like of course nitrogen, but also phosphorus, and this is a major uh, non non circular uh, system. So uh, as long as this will uh, will continue. I think uh, the, at least the region will be will be uh, f uh, facing this this major issue. What do you think about this? Yeah, <laughs> I, I totally support the the, the opinion. Uh, mm, not to disappoint you, but uh, the, the assumption of this study is that the diet uh, and the current consumption remains constant. So we are not looking at changes in uh, in consumption patterns or uh, diets or. Uh, we are trying to optimize the use of the waste resources that we generate. But you're right, the first, uh, the most uh, effective measure will be uh, prevention or a reduction of the consumption or of the end, end of the imported stuff. But this is beyond the scope of this study. Maybe a last question, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, thank you, David, uh, for your presentation. Uh, for me, it's not very clear if you considered in your evaluation um, the depletion of uh, phos mineral phosphorus, the depletion of the resources, yeah. and how, and yeah. also if in the social cost you considered what happens in the exporting countries about that, wh which is the issue for Tunisia, Morocco, and, and so on. The assumption there, uh, when you do life cycle costing, is that there is a full uh, reallocation of the jobs. So there is no, we don't look at market effects there. We assume, you assume that there, there will be a reallocation of the jobs. That's for all the, uh, the uh, that's common when you do a life cycle. The assumption is fully rea full reallocation of the resources in terms of jobs. So you, you're not looking at the social effects there in this. It's not an externality we included. And for depletion, so that's maybe a, a something to, to, to be further investigated if you, and, and not with this tool. Uh, for the depletion, yes, it was the first uh, actually figure in the paper, uh, which I didn't, I just skipped here. But uh, yes, we, you can calculate with the same approach the, the depletion of phosphorus that you have for each individual scenario. 
And the interesting part here is that there is a depletion. People have to understand that uh, uh, there is always a depletion of phosphorus, even if you do an advanced recovery, because anyway, today you are recovering part of that resource through digestate or through partially is returned to land. So there is never a 100% return of the phosphorus if you, if you, do an, uh, if you, if you apply the te that te technology, because the assumption is that you are always div diverting a part of the feedstock from an existing use to, an to another use. So you have a delta, and that delta always implies a little bit of depletion. And uh, you can see it here. Uh, of course, it's always less than uh, extracting mineral fertilizer, but there is a little bit of loss uh, compared to, it's never 100% recovery, let's say, okay? Because the waste doesn't come for free. It comes from another treatment that could eventually, anyway, bring something to land. Maybe in, in an efficient way, but something today is returned to land. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thinking that that is explained thoroughly in the in the, <laughs> in the publication. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is a clarification uh, on your approach. It's about um, uh, the product you you are studying. If you can put the slide with a different name of the product. Uh, in fact, th they are different in their composition. Uh, some are pure phosphorus, and others are carbon, phosphorus, and other products. So uh, at the end, if you, your um, unit function is uh, one kilogram of uh, phosphorus biodisponible, but at the end, your product uh, is, is more complex. And in the assessment you made, uh, do you, um, with a different impact, do you take into account yeah. the whole uh, composition of the product? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're fully right. So, okay. anytime there is some nitrogen also applied, that is uh, uh, that is accounted for as a benefit, as a saving, and uh, and attributed to that scenario. But as a unit of reference, we refer always to kilogram of P. But we bring we include those savings, as you are illustrating now. So yes, they are included. To complete, uh, is there some pro uh, issues with heavy metals or things like that when you deal with uh, some uh, uh, waste treatment uh, uh, residues? Uh, they, they, they were fully balanced, these scenarios. So um, most of this, except of uh, this one, which is uh, Ashdec, uh, the technology, it's commercially known as this. This one is the only one that leaves uh, a lot of metals, and the concentration of metals here is superior to what you would have here, at least cadmium and a few others. All the others are reducing the concentration of metals. How? Through uh, processing. So you have a portion of metals. The portion of metals that doesn't go here goes to another ash that is disposed in a landfill. And we assume that that ash doesn't leach. So that is properly stored. So um, um, there is an assumption there. But these are cleaner than the, mo most of them, if you see, just if you see the composition, they are much cleaner than the, the rock phosphate derived fertilizer, except for this, uh, for this one that has uh, some, yeah, it's a little bit more dirty. <laughs> 